welcome and thank you. It is an honor to be able to be here and to speak to you today. Um, I, I do want to share, Mr. Tyler, Mr. Tyler said to tell you that he would love to be here today. He had a little procedure called a heart bypass last week. He's in the heart hospital still. I'm going to get him home today. So he wanted you to know that he would have loved to have been here uh, with me. As I reflected on Memorial Day, I paused a bit to think about who we are. Who, who are we standing here today? Well, we're mothers, we're fathers, we're brothers, we're sisters, we're nieces, we're nephews, we're grandparents, we're grandchildren, we're brothers and sisters, and we're veterans. We're honored to have our veterans here today. I am the daughter of Ralph Samuel Holloway. My father served in the Coast Guard during World War II in the South Pacific. I'm also the niece of Captain Jack Ferris. Captain Ferris plane went down over Alaska coming back from World War II and was never found. I remember many, many times my mother saying, walking down the street, that she thought she saw at the back of his head and wondered if maybe, just maybe, he'd come home. I'm the sister of William Newton Holloway, who served during Vietnam War on a nuclear submarine protecting our lands. I'm also the sister of retired Major Ralph Holloway, who served as a helicopter pilot in Vietnam, three tours of duty, was awarded the Bronze Star, the Silver Star, and the Purple Heart. I'm also the niece of Polly Book, Polly Ferris Book, and I brought a little sample of something that she did. During World War II, she's now deceased and she's buried over there under one of those oak trees. During World War II, she joined the United Services Organization and she painted portraits of wounded servicemen and women all over this world. She painted over 3,000 of those portraits. She kept these diaries, she kept photographs of them, and each, and each page she has allowed the serviceman or woman the opportunity to write about their experience. Um, and they're from all over the United States, and it is a treasure for me to have that. And of course, last but not least, I'm also the wife of Hugh Tyler, who served as in the Air National Guard and was called to active duty when the Pueblo was seized in 1968. Now, we all have our stories. You talk about the stories that are represented here. Each of you have your own stories represented here by these beautiful flags that are laid out and by your presence here today. <coughs> Throughout our nation's 400-year history, the United States, Americans have fought on the battlefields both near and far, in clashes both small and large, alone and with allies at their sides. From the, from the American Revolution in the late 18th century to today in Iraq and Afghanistan, these conflicts have shaped our policies, have influenced our culture, have defined our borders, and they have cost thousands of lives. In his speech at Gettysburg, it's interesting, in the, the log cabin, you'll notice the editorial today, he talks about Lincoln's speech at Gettysburg. Well, I wrote this last night at 10 o'clock before I read that. But Abraham Lincoln's words focused on the loss of life during the Civil War and the higher cause for which lives were given. But they ring true today. That from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their full measure of devotion. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people should not perish from this earth. Lincoln's charge was to ensure that the cause to which each soldier gave their life would not be lost, and that this union, which he himself had given an oath to preserve, protect, and defend, would grow stronger. Whatever you make of the wars in which these soldiers fought, whatever you make of war itself, their sacrifices are real and permanent. How death came to them, then and now, only they know. We who have not been called or have been lucky enough to not have
have lost someone dear. We still feel the loss. Obviously, you're here today. You still feel the loss. But these things are worth remembering. Memorial Day has a long history in our country. Southern women used to, to bring flowers to the soldiers' graves during the Civil War. In 1868, Commander Chief John Logan of the Grand Army of the Republic designated May 30th as Memorial Day for the purpose of strewing flowers and otherwise directly decorating the graves of their comrades who died in defense of their country. Many of you will remember that we used to call it Decoration Day. Memorial Day is not about war or division. It is about reconciliation. It is about coming together to honor those who gave their all. So today is about remembering those who have served and who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. It is also about remembering those who still serve. The men and women today who still serve in Iraq and in Afghanistan and all parts of the world, they are not only they are protecting our safety and our freedom, but they're also working to ensure the liberty and freedom for others. War has been with us a long time, as long as mankind has been on this earth. The very first patron saint, St. Francis of Assisi, was a soldier. He spent over a year as a prisoner of war, and he wrote a prayer that I think it is fitting for us to end with today. Please hear his prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, where, is, where there is hatred, let me so love, where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Thank you very much. God bless you, and God bless America.